Hello guys, what is going on? Santa Chelsea back here again for my rational perspective on West Ham nil, Chelsea won a massive win in the race for Champions League football. I shouldn't be surprised because the nature of tonight's performance and, you know, Chelsea going away to a difficult away ground and getting the job done efficiently, being so resolute and perfect, basically defensively, shutting down the opposition's biggest threats and being clinical when the big chance arises. It's what Tuchel has done so far. He's what, it's what he's mastered. You know, he's mastered the ability of the 1-0. And it was something that Jose Mourinho did so efficiently when he was Chelsea's manager. Um, when Chelsea got ahead, you knew they were going to win games. And if Tuchel can bring some of that back to this Chelsea side, you know, there's a lot of hope for next season, I think, in terms of that. But it wasn't an amazing performance. I was actually a little bit surprised at the lack of intensity, I think, from both sides during the game. Um, just personally for me, watching the game, it didn't seem to be as tense filled as I expected it to be. You know, this was probably West Ham's biggest game in a number of years. I know they're missing some key players. Firstly, Declan Rice, uh, no Michael Antonio, um, Dawson, of course, suspended. Creswell got injured, so Fredericks had to play on the left instead of the right of, of their defence. Um, so, of course, there were changes there, but I expected a lot more. But once again, you know, Tuchel's tactics and Chelsea being able to completely shut down Jesse Lingard. I mean, the most Jesse Lingard did in that game, he had one audacious attempt, which, you know, got us a little bit nervous in the second half. But other than that, you know, for such an electric player who's been inspirational for West Ham, the space just wasn't there for West Ham to exploit. Something they've been brilliant at in recent weeks with Jesse Lingard and also Jared Bowen is exploiting that space on transition. that just simply wasn't there for them to run into today. And that was due to our shape that's been so resolute under Thomas Tuchel, so focused, the, the two in front of the back three, but the back three working so well today. I mean, I just want to take a look at that starting lineup because there were some surprises in there. I think obviously we knew Edward Mendy was going to be in there, but Christensen, Thiago Silva and Rudiger, it's a back three that we've discussed before. I think we were having this discussion about this particular back three when Thiago Silva was out injured and keeping Christensen in the side. We haven't really seen it. I think Tuchel may have used this back three, I think maybe in the Porto first leg, just when we were making subs. Um, but in terms of starting a game, I, unless you guys can correct me in the comments, I don't think we've done it so far. Um, so it's interesting seeing that. David right wing back, which he hasn't played a lot on the Tuchel so far. We knew Kante Georgie was going to be the double six with no cover. Ben Chirwell back at left wing back. And we've got to speak about Ben Chirwell because wonderful player. Mason Mount, Timo Werner and Christian Pulisic. So I was speaking yesterday about the front three in my preview and sort of what you sort of wanted for this game. I have to say, you know, I wasn't too surprised that Timo Werner started this game if Chelsea were going to look to hit West Ham on transition at times for his pace and, of course, his, his finishing ability today. But also Christian Pulisic, you know, he's been in great form, didn't have the best game today, but I could understand why Pulisic would start. And, of course, Mason Mount has to start every single game for Chelsea Football Club because he is Chelsea Football Club's best player at the moment. Um, and I think that, you know, the first 20 minutes for me, I thought our passing was quite sharp. I think the way we counter-pressed, the way we penned uh, West Ham back, they really struggled to get out. But it was just that inability at times to break down uh, West Ham's low block. You know, I, I felt that we could have been doing more in those opening 20 minutes. And it was just a, a sense that there's so much pressure as there has been for quite a long time on that front three to not only be the creators at times, but also be the finishers, of course. And I, and I think sometimes there is that weight pressed onto them so much. And as the first half sort of drifted, you felt that West Ham were coming back into the game. They were absolutely looking for as many set-piece opportunities. It was a flashback to last season at the London Stadium against West Ham because that was that night we lost 3-2. But in particular, set-piece woes for Chelsea last year. Shows you the difference this year to last year. You know, in terms of their set-piece opportunities, the closest they came through them in that first half, uh, you know, they were claiming that uh, Dave hit his arm. But other than that, of course, it wasn't a handball. But... Other than that, I felt Chelsea all, all through the night and, and took all justified, you know, putting David right wing back and also having that back free with height, you know, to deal with the height of, say, Suchek and the height of West Ham uh, pretty much throughout their team. The physicality, they, they score a lot of goals from set pieces. And I think it was absolutely justified with the way Thiago Silva, Rudiger and Christensen, all three of those um, at times were a little bit sloppy um, with passes out from the back I felt at times we lost possession and gave it away a little bit too much and on another day West Ham could have punished us a little bit more but I think when the defenders were asked uh, to be that physical presence in set piece opportunities for West Ham I think they were dominant which is which has been the case uh, pretty much other than that West Brom game a few weeks back so really impressed by them we've got to speak about Timo Werner um Timo I mean the Tale of, you know, two halves, of course, and what a cliche to use. But, I mean, it really was. I think we saw the best and worst of Timo Werner today. In the first half, we saw the best of Timo Werner. Funny enough, against a side that didn't offer us tons and tons of space. 
Um, you know, against Man City last weekend, you could absolutely understand why Timo was in that game. You know, Chelsea defending, wanting to counter that high line from Man City being exploited. What really impressed me about Timo Werner's finish, in the end, it's a simple finish. I expect uh, a centre forward for Chelsea of his calibre to be putting that away. It was his movement and also his build-up play. One of the things that has frustrated me with Timo Werner and why at times I don't want him in this team is because I feel he, he lacks the ability to help us in build-up, you know, the build-up from deep. The way he started that move and then finished it, the movement to get into the centre of the box and those low crosses into the box from out wide, I think is so much more important than we don't when we're, we're not using a physical presence up top anymore when we're going for that full stein sort of uh, player whether that is Timo Werner whether that is Kai Havertz you need those low crosses into the box for those players to feed off because they don't have the, the same physical presence of a Tammy Abraham or Olivier Giroud so I felt really clever play and Ben Sherwell um, who created I think the most chances for us in in the first half brilliant time to ball into the box and Timo Werner absolutely ruthless when he needed to be to be honest the half was drifting it was going away from Chelsea and I, and I did concern that you know especially offensively we weren't doing a lot so it was on the break it was maybe against the run of play a little bit but Chelsea being ruthless when they needed to be which is what they've been under Thomas Tuchel despite not having great goal scorers you know we we still lack that clinical edge you know I, I still think Chelsea could have scored two or three today uh, on the break and that was evident in the second half the second half I mean Timo Werner he should be scoring that rebound opportunity there's no excuse for me you know you have to be putting that in the back of the net. And I've seen people demean the likes of Tammy Abraham for the poaching ability, you know, for the tap-ins, you know, people call tap-in merchants. There's a there's a quality to that. There is a there's a, a coolness that you need in that situation. And you know, if Timo scores that goal, yes, in the end, Chelsea win the game, we forget about that miss. But if we don't, you know, those are those moments that he needs to be a lot more clinical. And we've got Real Madrid on Tuesday. We're going to have some even more tense games coming up. And it's just Timo Werner's ability there to, to be more ruthless. And I, and I think that's still a concern, even though, of course, today we've got to give him the praise. He scores the winning goal, one of the biggest winning goals we've had this season. So praise for Timo on that end. And I also think just all round, I think his game was a lot better today. I think the way he would uh, receive the ball, I think try to link up with others. I, I don't think he was breaking down moves as much as, as he has in the past. So I think Timo Werner deserves a lot of praise today. Um, I think someone else who deserves, I think more praise is, is Mason Mount. I mean, Mason Mount is just absolutely sensational. I think both him and Ben Cheer, well, uh, Ben has sort of been trying to reach Mason levels in recent weeks. And I think both him and, um, and Mason were just extraordinary today. They were exemplary. I mean, and Ben Cheer, well, who's been out of the team, who was out of the team when Tuchel first arrived. I never sort of lacked confidence or belief in, in Ben Chirwa because I remember his start to life at Chelsea was wonderful. It was brilliant. You know, his first run of games under Lampard, I thought hit all round his game in terms of offensively, but also defensively was so good. And even though he had that rough patch when everyone else had that rough patch in our squad, when it went wrong in uh, December and January, I fully expected that he'd get back into the side under Thomas Tuchel. And he's absolutely earned his place for Tuesday against uh, Real Madrid. He is our first choice left wing back. There is no competition at the moment. Um, just as I said months back, I said that Ben Chua will be the first choice left wing back because you can play him in a wide array of against a wide array of opposition. You can play him against teams who want to sit back. You can play him against teams who want to press up high. He's got that acceleration. He's got the physicality as well, even though he's not the tallest player. Um, I think he uses his, his body real intelligently against bigger players at times. Um, we have to talk about the red card for Balbuena. Of course, it's going to be, I think, the talk of the game, to be honest, because, you know, the game wasn't filled with tons of highlights other than the team over and a go and miss. I have to say that I do think it is a red card. Um, yes, we can have this conversation about the game's gone mad. People, you know, the, the officials don't know what the game is anymore. I can understand that. I do feel sorry for Balbuena. There's nothing in me that is going towards him saying he did it maliciously. But you don't have to do something maliciously for it to be a red card. I mean, every time I watched that back, it looked worse and worse. It's one of those challenges that could have been a horror tackle and it could have ended Ben Sherwell's season. Now, I understand the argument that he's clearing the ball. What is he supposed to do in that situation? I absolutely understand that argument. Um, but I just, I maybe it's just my mind because I've seen so many VAR calls with those type of challenges that just get sending offs now and, and just get checked and the longer it went on you know a decision is going to be made like that of course hurt West Ham I um, mean I don't think the the red card changes the game that drastically because I don't think West Ham were doing enough to challenge Edward Vendy at all tonight so I, I don't think you could say that was the moment that killed off the game that was the moment that you know West Ham were really going at Chelsea I don't think that was really the case I just think it maybe made the game peter out a little bit more um, some other things to touch on I thought N'Golo Kante once again both him and Jorginho as they did last weekend made no 
low errors. You know, I, I felt they really marshaled that area really well. You know, the, the lack of space, once again, the lack of counterattacking opportunities. It just felt at times they were let down by their back three, which gave away some cheap, you know, they they un unenforced errors that I think could have hurt us tonight. But other than that, I felt both of them, in particular Kante, with some key interceptions. Tammy Abraham finally getting a chance and he could have scored right at the end there. Um, just great to see Tammy. I mean, I don't mean I don't know how many more times we're going to see Tammy in the Chelsea shot. I don't know if it was just because of the opportunity tonight to play him. Um, I hope we get to see a bit more of Tammy because the argument still persists for me that, you know, I, I don't think this attack is doing enough. I think about next weekend against uh, Fulham where Chelsea, no excuses, have to win that game. Um, we're going to need goals. We need big goals in, in this. We need as many goals as possible. And even if Tuchel doesn't fancy Tammy beyond this season, I still think at least he should be on the bench. I just him, him being out the squad, I think, creates more discussion and more debate that doesn't really need to happen when we're getting so many positive results under Tuchel at the moment. I think it creates a rod for, Tuchel, for his own back, Tuchel, and I don't think he needs to. I think to have that option there, potentially in a situation like this where you want maybe a more physical presence for the final 10 minutes, I can absolutely understand that. So I don't expect Tammy to be thrown back into the starting 11 against Fulham. Absolutely not based on, you know, Timo Werner scoring today, but also just generally under Thomas Tuchel. The first time Tammy Abraham has, has played any minutes for Chelsea since the 20th of February. February, we fully expect Tammy to be off but I just I still think having like two left backs on the bench is just silly to me so I think Tammy should be on the bench um, and, and offers just a different option if, if Tuchel wants it I also just have to credit this team in what has been a very difficult week for Chelsea and I want to make this abundantly clear and this is not against Tuchel or the players is completely separate Today's result makes no difference to what has happened in the past week. I mean, it was never going to, I think, for a large proportion of supporters, and it shouldn't because it's a separate matter. But what I want to praise the players for is, is with all the noise and the instability that clearly affected them on Tuesday, and all, you know, it's just been a crazy week, I think, for everyone involved at Chelsea and involved in football in this country, really, and around the world experiencing what has happened. I think you've got to give absolute praise to Tuchel, his players, and just the way they went out there in what is a big game, the biggest game of Chelsea season so far, in the context of the race for Champions League football, we've seen Liverpool drop points today. We've seen other teams drop points. To keep their focus, to get this performance right that puts Chelsea in a great position for the remaining games of the Premier League season, I think they deserve so much credit. They've done so much great work. And I just hope for Tuchel and the players, they get the appreciation they deserve and we don't have any more noise around the club. Um, so they can just focus on the rest of the season because Real Madrid, what an amazing opportunity to get to a Champions League final. The top four, we should be finishing off top four now for me. Um, even though we've got difficult games uh, compared to everyone else, we're three points clear of West Ham. I think we have a better goal difference than nearly all the teams below us as well um, I still think it's in Chelsea's hands to get the job done now so those are my thoughts on tonight's game uh, man of the match I think I still have to give it to Mason Mount because I just think Mason Mount's levels and his performance it's, it's being so crucial to this team and probably should have scored a goal or two from long range shots that are actually quite good at tested uh, Fabianski but uh, Ben Chirwell for me is just behind uh, him in all round performance but thank you guys for watching today's video if you did enjoy hit that like button hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea have a great evening and I'll see you again